Good afternoon, jazz fans. Today we're talking about transcribing. Now, those of you who are subscribed to my channel know that most of my videos are of me playing along with great jazz solos or of written transcriptions that I've done. I've received lots of comments from people asking me to talk about my transcribing process, and that's what we're going to do today. I see this as being the first video in a series of videos on transcribing, so please comment down below any questions or comments you might have that you'd like me to explore in future videos. Now first of all, what is transcribing? A lot of people think transcribing is to write a piece of music down, write a solo or an arrangement down. And that's true, but we're talking more about the jazz musician's definition of transcribing, which is to learn something by ear directly to your instrument. Now this form of transcribing to me is the single best thing you can practice to become a better musician. Transcribing helps your ear tremendously. Transcribing helps your technique as you learn something that you couldn't play before. Transcribing also helps with your knowledge of theory. You learn new sounds, new ideas, new ways to outline different chords. It also helps you learn the vocabulary of that style of music you're working on. Now when you think about it, that's how everyone learned how to play music, especially guitar before the invention of, say, tabs. Before tab, guitarists had to put on the record and to go back and forth trying to learn the same four seconds of music. Now this process was frustrating and long, but it was infinitely more rewarding than just reading the tab. I would say that's the greatest downside of having all this information at our disposal. Although we can learn all these great pieces of music, it's very much on the surface as we didn't actually take the time to learn it. Now the first thing I would stress about transcribing is transcribe something you like. This might seem obvious, but many of you might be students with teachers telling you transcribe these lines, transcribe this solo. Many of you might be on the internet on forums or on videos and people say everyone should learn this rhythm change solo or this is the best blues solo to learn. I would advise you to resist the temptation to fall for that. What's important is what you like. Also, transcribing is a long and often frustrating process. It's best that you work on something you like. The other day I was listening to the album Cookin' with the Miles Davis Quintet. There's a point in John Coltrane's solo on the track Blues by Five that caught my ear. In that moment I wrote down when it happens in the song because I knew I wanted to learn it. This to me is the most organic way to transcribe. You're listening to music and something catches your ear. It's as simple as that. It could be a two bar line or it could be an entire solo. For the sake of this video I'll be learning that line with you all today. Before learning a line I think it's important to get the context of the song. What key it's in, what's the form, what are the chords. So this song, Blues by Five, is a blues in B flat. The line happens right before the last four bars of the blues when it's a 2-5-1. His line is over the 3-6 that precedes that 2-5-1. If any of these terms are confusing to you, please let me know and I can make a video in the future discussing it further. Let's listen to that line. Before going to learn the line, I like to loop it over and over again. Depending on the difficulty of the transcription, I have three tools I like to use. I built this mini enclosure which takes the stereo sound from, say, my iPod, goes into a quarter inch converter, and it has this toggle here that switches between left channel, mono, or just the right channel, and then it has a mono out of whatever you selected. Because you'll notice that Songs often have the instruments on one side of the stereo spectrum or the other. As an example, here's John Coltrane on Little Old Lady. You'll notice the piano is pretty faint on the right side. That's because it's on the left channel. And Coltrane's on the left as well. And you, you can't hear him as well on the right channel. Let's say you wanted to learn the bass part of the song, you would isolate the right channel. 
the left is piano and saxophone, the right is more drums and bass. A looper pedal is also a good tool for transcribing. I like the Boss RC2 because it has an aux in which makes it easy to use an iPod or say a phone. I like the app Audio Stretcher. It allows you to loop, change the speed, change the pitch, and freeze moments in the music. Before learning a line, I like to know what chords are behind it. Now this line happens on bars 7 and 8 of a 12 bar blues in B flat, so you'd expect D minor 7 and G7. Now the D minor 7 sounds good, but the G7 clashes with Coltrane's line. What Coltrane is doing is actually playing a substitution. He's playing D minor 7, D flat minor 7, or 3 minor 7, flat 3 minor 7. It's a very common substitution, 3 to flat 3, that precedes the 2, 5, 1 at the end of the blues. What I added at the end there was the 5 to that flat 3, or the 5 of that 2, so flat 6 of the key. Now that 2-5, the flat 3 minor 7, flat 6 dominant 7, is borrowing from a different key. It's borrowing from B major, or C flat major. Instead of going 3-6, they're going 3, flat 3 minor 7, flat 6-7, six, to 2. And Coltrane's line is very scalar. The first part of the line, he's just going down a B flat major scale. He adds a little mordant. The second part of the line, he's borrowing from the key of B major. And like in the first bar, he adds a mordant at the beginning of the measure. Now for us guitar players, I recommend playing the line all over the fretboard. For non-guitarists, I recommend playing the line in many different keys, maybe all 12 keys. This will help you learn the fretboard and learn the notes on the guitar. I also recommend learning the line in different registers. Sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't. You might run into range issues. Just like how we listen to the line over and over again, I like to play it over and over again. It's hard to know for how long you should do this, but I think the longer the better. For a line like this of a couple bars, I'd probably play it for about 20 minutes straight. After learning the line, playing it over and over again in different positions, different registers, I often like to write it down in my book of lines. This allows me to revisit it in the future for some melodic inspiration. It also helps me keep track of what kind of lines I used to like and respond to as I've been compiling these for about five years now. The goal of learning a line is not so that you can play it in your next solo. Rather, you're training your ears and your hands to learn the language of music. In my case, the language of jazz. That's why it's the process that's important and not the end result. A couple years ago, I learned to solo every day for an entire month and I posted it to my YouTube channel. After doing that, I really asked myself what it was that I got from it. I wasn't sure if I had an answer. 
What I realized a few months later was that I had much greater facility to play what I heard in my head. I attribute this to having spent all that time transcribing that music. I really recommend every musician spend more time transcribing.